The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. Times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and the payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison, until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had the same mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 2,977 innocent lives were lost on 9-11. In the last 19 years, we think of all the lives that have been sacrificed through wars following those attacks. We think about the lives on this soil lost to gun violence, suicide, or reckless decisions like drunk driving or starting fires. We are approaching a predicted yet still daunting number of 200,000 lives to be lost to COVID. Different decisions made by different people, yet the results can affect so many. I worked on this sermon from my desk in my bedroom slash office, a decision I made to split my time of work between church and home. And that decision may never affect you, but I hope it sends a message of caring. And as I sat, I looked out and saw three recycle bins that had been emptied out at the end of my driveway. And I'm thankful for that curbside pickup, which gives the decision whether to assist in caring for creation. I watch a steady stream of people walking and running and riding bikes by, enjoying the fresh air, which triggered my heart to ache for those on the West Coast covered in dangerous smoke from the forest fires. People make different decisions, which sometimes results 
in widespread suffering like 9-11 or experienced by just a few people like those who are sitting with a COVID patient or gunshot victim taking their last breath. No matter where there is suffering, God is there. In the fresh air, God is there. When life hurts, even when we do not notice, God is always there, whispering to us how the power of forgiveness leads to a place of healing. Who has angered you the most as an individual or as a country? For the gospel today preaches to forgive until it hurts. A well-known preacher and author and Barbara Brown Taylor once wrote, when you allow your enemy to stop being your enemy, all the rules change. No one knows how to act anymore because forgiveness is an act of transformation. It is a quiet resolution that changes people in ways anger only wish it could. You see, giving forgiveness just a chance might pleasantly surprise what insight we can gain and maybe even be transformed. If we allow God to move us from a place of anger and blame to a place of using mercy, then grace can replace hate. Mercy is giving relief to someone or something in distress. And then we exchange phrases like, I'm sorry, or we're sorry. But then we pray for them. If it happens again, with mercy, as Jesus tells us, we continue to forgive repeatedly. And giving continual forgiveness is heavy. It's hard work. It hurts. But we strive to be merciful as we believe God is always merciful. And it takes some time to get used to it. But it's a healthier, it's a more faithful way to live. When we can find it in our soul to forgive, not seven times, but 77 times. Roy was a business owner who was always looking for a job for ex-convicts. One day, when asked why, he told a story of a young man working in a company in Columbus, Ohio, delivering goods and collecting the money. Over time, this young man stole several hundred dollars from the company. One day, his boss told him, he could go home and have the rest of the day off, that he would take care of his route that day, but would love for him to bring his wife and join him at his home that night for dinner. The young man waited at home in agony all day, especially as his wife continued to question curiously why he was not at work. In the evening, they got dressed, and the young couple goes to the boss's house, and they were greeted warmly by the boss and his wife. And after they visited casually, the boss turned to the young employee and asked him to tell his wife why he had not been at work that day. The heavy ordeal, as the young man revealed the facts of what he had done, his wife broke down and wept. The boss explained that he could have put him in prison, but instead he was going to give him a second chance. There were no payback demands. Instead, he said, you come back to work tomorrow. You will not handle money yet, but you'll have the opportunity to 
redeem yourself. So the young man went back to work and 11 years later became the president of the company. And as the president revealed his own confessional story, his eyes still filled up with tears going back to that day. But this is why he continues to go out and to find those who have, found, who have been in trouble a second chance. This is what Jesus means today in the parable when he says we can be set free. That God's grace can enter into our lives and can change us, which is the purest result of forgiveness. For in the parable today, the debt is unpayable. The sum is too much, which is the point of the number. That when the debt is so big... The only alternative is to forget it in its entirety, to let it go. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus' parables give us alternatives to our human decisions. We thank God is the God as we hear today in the psalm that says, one who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We pray that we may live the same. We follow a Savior who models how forgiveness can happen. Author Randall O'Brien wrote, Forgiveness is the only way to be fair to ourselves. For only forgiveness liberates us from the painful past to a brand new future. Only forgiveness can set us free. I want a life free of hate's hold. But this alternative life is harder and it's heavier work. It's much easier to just hate than it is to forgive. Jesus teaches us a different way, modeling an outcome of experiencing God's grace abundantly in our lives. And when we make the decision to forgive without keeping count, slowly the weight lifts and we are free. Amen.